But earlier when I mentioned that Watchtower is part of the scarlet-colored uh, wild beast riding upon, the, upon whom the great harlot of Babylon rides, you didn't seem to be too concerned with that. We disagree with you. Oh. Well, the society doesn't disagree with that, actually. I, I do have some uh, PDF files of various letters sent out by the Jehovah's Witness congregation um, in response to this. So, Where did you get them? Where did I get them? I mm -hmm. got them from a friend. And and your friend, did he received those personally? No, he got these uh, off of randytv.com, apparently. Okay, so where do you think they came from, Ethan? randytv.com. What's randytv.com? I have no idea. I've never been there. So is that fair to take that as factual information if you don't know what randytv.com is? In, in your own words, uh... Well, like factual information is is key in this matter. As far as I can determine, having seen branch letters before, we have them, I'm sure, posted on the uh, on the board. Uh, I have caught, talked with uh, representatives of the United Nations when I found this out, and they said from the United Nations that Watchtower was a part of it. I have not written the branch, nor have I talked to the branch, but it does strike me that at least one side of the two parties says there was involvement, and as far as I can tell, if you would like to see the letters and determine for yourself whether these seem to be valid or whether they're frauds, I don't know. Um, but it does seem to me that this indeed, indeed did happen. Or at least, if, if this uh, if somebody uh, you discovered was supporting the United Nations and the congregation on a rumor, wouldn't you choose to investigate it rather than simply dismiss it? Uh, what extent, you say you spoke to individuals of the United Nations, so what individuals did you speak to there that would have knowledge of this? Um, well, it's not an entirely unknown event, as I understand that many people continue to call since that uh, whole affair was blown up, but they have a pretty prepared little response and what I called was the United Nations information. And so you spoke to an individual? Mm -hmm. And this person was over what? A representative. I but they had a pre-prepared response, you said? Yeah, they have a pre-prepared response that was read to me, or it sounded pre-prepared. <laughs> it, it is not... And mere he, wild conjecture. There is, you know, substantial. And who rumored that they were part of the United Nations? You said it was rumored. Who, who spread that rumor? No, 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 no. I said the, the scenario that I gave was where I used the rumor. Um, initially, when this came to light, was in <laughs> the UK Guardian in an article written by Stephen Bates. You can go on the UK Guardian. The article's still up, from what I understand. And who's Stephen Bates? I have no idea. Mutt, reporter. Um, he's, uh, he's Stone Phillips. He is um, Matthew, uh, Chris Matthews. He is uh, the proverbial reporter man. Well, which is it, though? Because I want, I want to be clear, because you said you don't know, but then you're saying he's... He's a reporter. He writes for the UK Guardian. Okay, so have you seen his work before? Nope. Okay. But it's on the so UK did you just web pull this off the website and you took it as factual? I mean, can you substantiate any of this with the exception of what you say is called through a hotline that gives you a pre-recorded answer? Let's see where I'm going with that. Is it really factual what you're presenting to us? That's all I'm asking. And that's all Well, I don't I believe it is factual, and that's as far as I can say. Okay, well, that's... You know, I, this, is this, did something like this definitely happen? Well, I encourage anybody who questions it to examine it. Surely something of this magnitude would merit investigation. But anyway, when it was broken was on Monday, uh, October the 8th of 2001. And it was subsequently that the Watchtower withdrew their membership as a United Nations NGO, allegedly, according to these documents. Which, again, you're more than welcome to uh, have a look at. Uh, we came to you with scriptures. 
and the scriptures that you indicated held a Bible-based principle, which I'm sure you would agree is guilt by association. So when I come to you with evidence of guilt by association, whereas you would judge me, you choose not to judge the organization, right? So you, you seem to want to convince us that the I'd faithful and discreet slave are not representative of Jehovah's will on earth today. I'm trying to convince and you that they're, what I am doing is not unjustified, is not baseless, is not some sort of random act of a rebellious, disturbed youth. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't expect you, you, or you will care about a word that I say. But, at the end of the day, I hope to convince you that whatever I'm doing that you find to be detestable or deleterious is not done without factual or without what I believe to be factual basis for doing so. But I don't behave randomly. I don't formulate actions, generally speaking, that are just off the cuff. And so when I decided to leave the organization known as Joe's Witnesses, it was not on a whim. It was not all on one thing alone, but it was on substantive, substantive research that I believe to be factual, that I believe to be compelling. And as Paul said, the things that we are persuaded to believe, well, the things that I was persuaded to believe at some point in time did not seem so persuasive anymore. So, what we're trying to persuade you, mm. or the point that we're trying to make for you, is that you have separated from the faithful and discreet slave. Okay. I've separated from an organization that, as spoken of, I think it was Matthew chapter 25, claims we are the anointed and trying to draw away followers to themselves. Yes, according to that scripture, I, I am drawing away from that. A false prophet, Deuteronomy 18, 19 to 22. Somebody who has spoken in the name of God, claimed to be a prophet, and who has made false prophecies and false teachings. According to the Bible, which you are trying to hold me to, and I, I'm i not trying to wriggle out of that, and ultimately the Bible is the only authority, but it does go both ways, because I don't imagine that you would choose to debate that particular scripture. So who do you think we represent, the three of us sitting here? You represent the long arm of the law, the... Uh, <laughs> the chosen representatives of the congregation that ultimately was chosen by the circuit overseer, as I understand it, who was chosen by the uh, the faithful slave, or the branch committee, and who was chosen by the faithful slave. So you are the very bottom of that long, multi-tiered power structure. So, when we say that we feel that you've apostatized mm -hmm. from the organization that we belong to, mm -hmm. you, you really then don't have any problem with that statement, do you? I have problem with the implications that you seem to be saying along with that. But no, ultimately, at the end of the day, I have drawn away from a specific organization. And so that's, that's what we're trying to convey to you, is that your actions indicate that you have drawn away from this organization that we're here representing this evening. That's been quite clear all along, hasn't okay. it? Okay. I, I just want to make sh sure you understand that's that's why we're sharing scriptures with you tonight. And what I'm in turn saying is that the definition of apostasy as defined by the Watchtower is not interchangeable, much the same way the governing body and faithful and discreet slaves is not interchangeable, their version of apostate is not interchangeable with the Bible's view of apostate. At no point does it ever indicate a drawing away from an organization, which is what I'm accused of. I'm not accused of drawing away from Christ. I'm accused of drawing away from an organization, which is not scriptural. So those individuals in the first century who, who taught other than what the congregation taught, hmm? that's not a drawing away? They didn't say what the congregation taught. They taught what Christ taught. And of course, no, the early apostates mm -hmm. that drew away from the Christian congregation well, they taught started teaching things that were not in harmony with the things that were taught by the apostles and by Jesus Christ. Precisely. 
therefore they were not confessing Christ. But if the organization itself is not teaching things confessing Christ or in agreement with Christ, then it, are the apostates drawing away from that organization truly apostates? The answer would be no, of course not. I'm telling you that I have no desire to draw away from the teachings of Christ. I have a desire to draw to the teachings of Christ, and as I understand it, as my research has shown me, whether you choose to invalidate it on the basis that I'm a know-nothing 19-year-old who doesn't have enough experience to determine these things for myself, well, hey, you have that right. Well, I think you have the right to choose for yourself. Well, according to you, that I, I know nothing. I have, I may have the right to choose for myself, but I certainly don't have the ability as you see it, because I'm a 19-year-old. Right. I don't have the life experience to make these choices. Is that an unreasonable statement, though, Ethan, in the, the bigger picture of life? Oh, absolutely would not. You, it's would you agree that every year you oh. gain more wisdom, more knowledge through life? But to, to infer that my opinions are inferior on the basis of that is somewhat of a fallacy, because no matter how young or no matter how old, we all make mistakes across the board. Even the most experienced and wise of individuals will at some point say something that they know nothing about or make a ridiculous claim. And then, let's say, a young, college-educated whippersnapper says, well, no, actually, see, that's not the case. And then they retract or say, oh, well, I didn't know that. It doesn't have to be insulting to be brought to your attention that Something has been wrong. Well, that's not our intent to insult you by any stretch. Okay. Our intent, again, really is to share the scriptures and to open your heart up to these thoughts. That is our full, earnest desire. Mm. Do you really believe that? Yeah, I do, actually. I do believe that you guys are doing, at the end of the day, what you think is right. Well, we appreciate your honesty. Well, I don't think that you brothers are out to harm me. I think that you brothers are operating under the parameters that you've been taught, guided to, and persuaded to believe. I don't think that you're defending something that you know to be wrong. That would just, I mean, that would, that would be appalling. <laughs> but on a similar uh, vein, I hope that you brothers don't think that I'm trying to defend or trying to attack something on, on a whim, on a... Uh, Youth, youthful folly. Well, it's not just um, it's not just being nineteen. The other evening, you you discussed that you know you were raised as a witness, but really you didn't apply yourself. You you didn't recognize what the value of your dedication was when you stood up there with that little group. Oh, I didn't. So you know, basically, you're you're telling us that in the last year or so you started to view things differently and, and to do a study. I hardly think that a, a year of personal Bible study is going to allow you to have enough knowledge on your own. Because that's where you told us your thoughts were coming from, that your yeah. thoughts are not based upon what other people are telling you. That's where it all started. Um, so, if how, how could you and reasonably, I mean, how could you become a plumber in a year? How could you become a master carpenter in a year? How could you become a master electrician in a year? It, it requires more time than that just to do those simple things. We're talking about the Word of God. And that's something that always puzzled me. Even growing up, didn't really connect until, as you said, about a year ago, but it's always talked about that single doubt. And only come back to that. An absolute truth, for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. This is an absolute mathematical truth. And as long as you know the parameters, that will never change. 2 plus 2 will never be 5. 2 plus 2 will never be 3 or any other number. It will always be 4. This is an absolute truth. But here we say that our organization is the truth and turn an absolute truth and then turn around and tell the members that even one doubt will bring this truth crashing in upon itself. So, would you say that it is an absolute truth in that? Or is it merely all that humans really, when talking about this matter, can do is have a very good assumption?